Today I'm going to be tying a number 14 Blueing Olive Hackle Stacker. I decided there were enough Adams patterns on YouTube, I decided I'd put something a little bit different to be a little more helpful for some of you. Begin by putting the uh, hook in the vise, and I'm using today brown or uh, olive gray 8-aught uh, thread. I'll be uh, tying that on, working my thread back towards the hook point, and clipping off excess thread. Continue working that back, just building a thread base well into the bend of the hook. For tailing material, or tailing shuck, I'm going to be using a gray, uh, grayish blue Antron. Comes on a card, fairly inexpensive. I've got a piece clipped here. And what I want to be very careful to do is make sure you stagger the tips. You don't want to have a cut flush. There we go. A flush cut on the, uh, on the tail. So I stagger the tips a little bit. I use a pin strap and apply that. Get my trailing shock tied on top of the hook. Okay, tie that down nice and tight. Wrap underneath the uh, tailing material, wrap forward to the thorax, or where the thorax would be, and bind the antron down. The reason I do that is to add a little bit of bulk to the fly because I want to build a tapered body, thinner in the back, a little bit thicker up towards the front here. So I've bound that down. I'm going to go one better. I'm going to tip the, pull the antron back towards the tail and bind it down a second time. I'm not go all the way back to the tail. I'm going to go back about midway, clip off the excess, and now I've got a, a thicker body here. Only slightly, but a thicker body nonetheless. And continue tying down with thread. This aids and saves a lot of thread than uh, build, trying to build up a uh, body with thread. It just takes a lot longer and a lot lo more thread. Now I can come work my way back towards the back and I'm ready for my olive turkey biot. I use turkey because uh, it's significantly longer than goose biot. I think goose biot is fine for tying tails on a stone fly or a copper john, but if you're going to wrap the body with biot, I would use turkey. When I tie in, or when I use turkey, uh, when I use biot, I wrap with the notch uh, in, located in the, uh, in the biot. Hopefully you can see that. There's a notch when you strip it away. I have that facing the front part of the fly. That will create a very buggy, nymphy looking pattern. If I'm doing a dry, I will sometimes put the notch towards the, uh, towards the rear, and that creates a smooth body. So here I tie on on the near side facing me, with the notch facing forward, bind down the remainder of the bias. Now, I'm going to take my whip finisher, I'm going to throw one, two, wraps, and what that allows me to do is pull my thread way out of the way and use, off camera you can't see, but use my bobbin cradle to keep my spool out of the way, my bobbin out of the way. Now I can freely wrap that by it around the shank of the hook and my thread doesn't get in the way. Carefully spacing, just a slight overlap, and you'll notice, I think you begin to see the raised rib that comes from this bayet when you wrap it with the notch facing forward. Okay, continue wrapping till I get up to the thorax and I'll bring my thread back into play. Move my bobbin cradle out of the way. Holding the biot straight up, I can take my thread and bind it down. Now I can clip off the remaining part of the bayet and continue wrapping, creating a smooth underbody there, wrapping all those loose edges down. Okay, now I can come back to the tie-in point and I reach for two CDC feathers. Now I use CDC most of the time. You can also use tippet material, uh, 3X or maybe even 2X. I've got two feathers here because I want to create a little bit of uh, meat to this. I, I don't want it to be too flimsy. So I've got two CDC feather stacked. They're extremely light. I'm going to hold those on top of the hook and tie those down. Slide it back just a little bit. There. Tie all those loose fibers down. Doesn't matter if some are, are stay loose. That's okay. Now work it back towards the tie-in point. I've got my thread hanging, my CDC uh, feathers holding straight up, and it's time for the Grizzly Olive Hackle. I've got a small piece left here, but this is size 14, sized for the hook I'm using. 
grizzly hackle. I'm going to strip away fibers from the stem so that I uh, have a little bit of bare stem to tie on. You can see there a little bit of a bare stem. With the shiny side facing me, I'm going to tie this on to the hook shank. Oops. There we go. Get a couple wraps on it. Hold it up with the CDC and wrap around it to create a, a posting here. There we go. Now I know it's on there pretty good. Okay. Now I'm going to reach for some uh, super fine dubbing in a uh, olive color. I like this because it's extremely fine. It dubs extremely tight. It's great for dry flies. It's uh, supposedly treated with um, silicone to keep it waterproof. And I'm for a hackle stacker, I like to apply a little bit more dubbing than I would normally do for a dry fly. I'm looking to create a very rounded, sort of a bulbed thorax to imitate the, um, the emerger. Begin piling that on in sort of a rounded... There we go. Creating a larger than you might think normal uh, thorax. Work the thread towards the front. Now I'm going to leave some room between the, the back of the eye and my thorax. I deliberately want the thread uh, back from the eye. I don't want to crowd the eye. Holding my CDC, or now my post, straight up, I can take the hackle and begin wrapping around the CDC. And this gets a little tricky because the CDC is, is extremely soft and, and kind of flimsy. But you want to wrap the hackle around that. Four or five times should work out okay. Let the fly tell you how many wraps of hackle uh, it takes, depending on the hackle, the density of the fibers on the hackle. So I'm going to keep wrapping, I think, until I just simply can't wrap anymore here. There we go. Maybe one more wrap. I'm careful. Great. Okay. Now I can tie that hackle down behind the eye. Stroke all the fibers you can, strike them all back, and tie that down firmly. Now I can clip off the excess. There we go. Clear the eye if there's any fibers that may be blocking the eye. Now's a good time to get those out of the way. Otherwise, you're going to be on the stream trying to thread this, and you're going to have a tough time. There we go. Now I can grab my post, pulling the fibers, pulling the hackle fibers t towards the rear of the fly, without stabbing your finger, towards the rear of the fly. Slide the fibers out of the way, pull the post down, and tie the post down. There we go. Fibers out of the way. Continue binding that post down. Now I can clip off the excess CDC. If it's long enough, use it for another fly. If this is too short, so I'm going to get rid of it. Again, stroking the fibers back. Now I can build the head of my fly. Grab my whip finisher. And three wraps is all it should take. I occasionally will throw in a fourth if I'm still trying to build a head. Now take my scissor. Instead of slicing the thread, uh, excuse me, instead of cutting the thread, slice the thread away with the sharp edge of the scissor. Now, I'm not done yet. I want to come back to the hackle fibers and stroke those forward. I want them all sitting on top of the fly, kind of so it looks like Don King. You can look on the underneath side here. You can kind of see a, uh, a very um, bulbous type uh, body. There we go. And all the hackle sitting up on top. And this fly will float all day long. Get a good view for you. There you are. Well, I enjoyed tying it. I hope you uh, guys give it a try. You have as much luck with this fly as I have. Thanks.